So Professor Angelini, thank you for this inspiring keynote talk. Uh, your CV is quite impressive. You're a technical engineer and a cardiac surgeon. So would you tell us how could you apply your technical engineering knowledge into cardiac surgery? Yes, um, heart surgery is very much a translation of uh, engineering, if you like, mostly hydraulics. For example, we do bypass graft, which is simply taking a piece of tube to bypass the narrowings. You may say it's like plumbing. Uh, the same things, for example, for replacing heart valve. There is also a lot of engineering in uh, developing devices which can be used in heart surgery. For example, the the uh, beating heart coronary surgery which we develop in Bristol. Mm -hmm. Uh, it require developing dedicated instruments, uh, what we call stabilizer, or uh, things like, uh, for example, uh, shunt tubing to facilitate the surgery. So I think to have a background in engineering, in my case, is, is been very useful in clinical practice now. Mm -hmm. And which were your innovative ideas inspired by engineering? Um, the, as I said, the, the beating heart surgery was very mm -hmm. much inspired by that. The, the, the idea of the stabilizer to keep the heart or the little bit of the heart where yeah. we do the surgery still came from the simple observation of a sewing machine, the foot of a sewing machine. But once you thought about that, you have to actually design and, and build the, the, the proper device. So if you got a, a bit of a uh, engineering experience of mind, it will make things a lot easier. Uh, and during the lecture, you pointed something worth mentioning. Although we are living in a high tech world, uh, all those machines cannot replace the skills of a surgeon, after all. And in that train of thought, uh, would you tell us something more about the off pump uh, coronary artery bypass? And what are its advantages to the lung heart machine surgery? I mean, the the, the technology, uh, for example, there are other disciplines where robotic surgery is used very successfully nowadays. In heart surgery, it's virtually almost completely been abandoned because of all sorts of problems. In the case of the off-pump surgery, it's, it's a very simple, if you like, technique which doesn't require a high level of technologies and we have demonstrated that in good hands, in the hand of people who have developed or learned the technique, mm -hmm. it can have significant benefit like reducing what we call morbidity, which is the complication after the surgery. For example, patients, if you don't use the heart-lung machine, tend to bleed less. Mm -hmm. Hence, they will need less blood transfusions. We know that the risk of getting an inf a chest infection is also reduced. So there are several benefits. At the end of the day, is the same operation, the final results is the same, but the way by which you reach the same, the final results is different, mm -hmm. one with the conventional machine and the other without it. I see. And in your opinion, what, uh, what is uh, the actual thing causing that not all countries embrace this off-pump surgery yeah. technique? It, it, uh, there are countries which have embraced it almost 100%. For example, mm -hmm. Uh, Japan, uh, India, uh, a lot of China's. Uh, part of this has got two reasons in my opinion. One is still a relatively young surgery mm -hmm. and it, when you develop something it takes time for people to recognize first of all you have to provide the evidence then it's beneficial mm -hmm. which by itself takes time. Second, the industry has got no much interest in developing this technique because it's pretty cheap. You can save money. Yeah. So there is not much money for the industry to be made. But also there is a learning curve which is a little step. So you have to go and see people doing these techniques, learn from them, and at first you will struggle. Mm -hmm. So some surgeons are much more comfortable in doing what they do mm -hmm. rather than taking the bother to learn something new, which is in every aspect of life, I guess. I see, yeah. And the last question, what are your impressions for the ICMS 2017? I, I thought it was fantastic. As I said, I've been in many, many places around the world. I travel a lot of places uh, and I was 
surprised, almost shocked to hear that you had more than 700 uh, uh, participants from 65 different countries. I think it's pretty admirable what this young guy have been able to organize and okay. for many years and to attract such an interest from, from a vast audience. I, I think it's quite unique. Thank it's really you. quite unique. Yeah. And what is your take home message to all those young, inspired doctors and scientists? Yeah, as I said, you have to do something because you've got a passion for it. You have to be committed to do it. You have to believe in it, um, to have enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. uh, don't do it for the money because, okay, everybody needs money. But I always say, if you get good at something, then you make the money as well. But that is the wrong way to start, the other way around. Mm -hmm. So if you've got enthusiasm, if you've got a commitment to something, medicine is still a fantastic field to be because you can really see the benefit of what you're doing to, to, to your patient. It's a very rewarding field. Definitely. Thank you very much for Pleasure. this interview. Pleasure. Uh, enjoy your stay in Sofia and hope to see you soon again. Thank you. Thank you for asking me to come here. Thank you.